so much of the time when I go out like in my wheelchair, um, I feel like people aren't seeing me as a person. I feel like people see me as the chair. And until very recently, I hadn't met anyone else who had my condition. And now I've only met them like online through support groups. I would try to hide, try to cover up my disability as much as I could. And I thought that by not wearing my hearing aids, even though that's disabling myself even more because the hearing aids are supposed to help me, I disabled myself because I didn't want someone to see that. I was afraid that them seeing that, they wouldn't want to have a relationship with me. They wouldn't be interested in me sexually. I, I do feel lonely. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I, it's, I've been single for two years. We usually think of disability as uh, some kind of physiological condition that limits the ability of people to function in society, to play the social roles that are typically expected of them. Um, so this really would limit them in, say, their ability to work or to be a student or, in the case of what we're talking about, to be a lover or partner. The result of the disability would be that they would be sexually and romantically impaired in some way. In fact, those expectations, those views of what disability is, point to the fact that disability is not simply medical or physiological. Much more importantly, it's social and cultural. It's it's a constructed identity so that certain physical traits or mental traits of certain kinds of people uh, get stigmatized and, and, and the stigma is globalized to engulf their entire identities. I'm always feeling like I have to prove myself in so many different ways. The way I feel about myself is just different about how people see me. It's like more, especially with with men, it's like they see skin, oh yeah, that's it, that's sexy, you know. Or they see a good body, okay, that's sexy. Well, okay, I'm not showing skin because I'm really cold. And um, with the body part, psh, no, that's just gross. I actually didn't used to wear makeup until about a couple years ago. I didn't think I... It, you know, it would be a point for me to wear makeup, you know. I mean, I don't know if you know, but that's my, that was my idea. Yeah, until just like more recently, I kind of started getting into it, you know. I'm like, eh, why not? What the hell? I actually studied uh, disability rights and, and uh, performing as a disabled person in college. I went to a very hippie college called the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, and uh, could create your own majors. And one of the things I watched was this documentary about disability and sexuality. And I remember just going, hey, you know what? I do have all those needs that everyone else has and desires and and it's uh it's okay to feel that way. You know, our symptoms and our disabilities are the things that people notice first about us, but they may in fact be the least interesting things about us. I was dating this girl for a while and uh, we had we had just had sex that day and then and then afterwards she suggested we have sex in my wheelchair. The fact that it was her idea was awesome. And the reason that it is, beyond like the whole novelty of it, is that it's actually an ultimate act of acceptance. Instead of saying, I'm dating you and it, I'm dating you and I'm fine with you being in a chair. But if she's having sex with you in your chair, it's not, oh, it's fine, I'm okay with it. It's, I like it, accept it, and it's actually uh, something that I'm interested in. For me in general, I would much rather take my time finding somebody that I really want to date. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've gone on dates with plenty of people and I've gone on second dates, but I want to make sure that I found the right person before I like start to commit. Um, so 
what I do is I tend to flirt a lot. Like I tend to hang out with a lot of people um, to test the waters and to see what they're like. Meet a lot of cool people and it's fun, which is really what matters for me. Um, my only hope is that I don't break any hearts. Uh, well, I think I've taught you, if if I if I may be so bold, I've taught you. Some... What do you think you've taught me about sex? Uh, I don't know what specifically I've taught you about sex, but I think in general, I feel like I can teach able-bodied people. Sex doesn't have to be like intercourse. Sex doesn't have to be, um, you know, penis and vagina sex. It can be, yeah. um, uh, you know, for me, basically, sex is anything that. Um, you know, gives me sexual pleasure that I can get off on, you know. Um, I, I'd like to think I have, like, sort of a wider definition of what constitutes sex. Sex is so many things. It's very much about pleasure. It's about knowing your body and knowing your mind. And it's also about knowing about danger, because there are dangers that go along with sex as well. Um, and about knowing... Um, how to pleasure yourself and other people. And it's generative and it's fun and it can be um, painful and it can be mysterious and it's um, definitely a gift. Instead of trying to sell disabled sex as being normal, which in a certain sense it is normal, I think there's a way of trying to sell it in a way that's both calling it quote-unquote normal and calling it quote-unquote weird or transgressive or, or queer. Because unless we face up to the fact that it's really going to scare the crap out of people, whether it's potential partners or healthcare providers or our families or our parents, if we don't face up to the scariness, we can't really find ways of dealing with the scariness. One of the things I've done um, and the Disabled Students Union has done um, is put on this series of panel discussions called Are Cripple Screwed? Um, we chose that because it's kind of in your face uh, and it breaks down different stereotypes and different boundaries that a lot of people kind of feel interesting about. I love doing the panels. <laughs> They're so much fun for me. Um, originally sort of started as like a dialogue about, um, about disability and sexuality and sort of morphed into what it is today, which is, you know, we go around to things like co-ops, we go to sexuality classes, we go to um, things and we talk about um, we talk about sex, we talk about societal perceptions of things and it's something that has really um, it's just it's really expanded my mind. I, I guess um, for me one of the important things about sexuality and disability is that it's, it's kind of a constant among humans, it doesn't matter your station in life but sexuality is a crucial and important part of it so it's something, it's, it, in, in a way, these panels are a way of identifying with people on, you know, through the disability and through the differences that people have, very obviously on a surface level. Um, it's finding a common ground that you can really feel just in that everybody has sexual frustrations that are you know, similar enough. Making that transition from like, okay, I'm doing all this stuff and like certain people are attracted to me to all of a sudden like I'm in a chair and I, for, for a solid year afterwards, um, I still identified as that guy. Like, for, I'd say a year and a half after my accident, like, one of my main things was, okay, like, I'm still, like, the biker. Like, I'd still go on biking websites, and I'd still do that. And, but eventually, um, I just kind of said, okay, like, I'm a political nerd, and I'm going to go to college. You guys probably noticed that I'm dressed really provocatively today, and um, this is something I like to do when I do panels because, um, partially because I really like to um, challenge people's like preconceived notions about what it means to be like disabled and a woman, and it's like, you know, oh, there's a girl in a wheelchair. Oh my God, she's hot. Oh no, like my preconceived <laughs> notions. You know, <laughs> this is so confusing. American culture, Western cultures in general have become much more open and frank about sexuality. That's happened too among people with disabilities, so that disability, which was, was once a taboo subject, is much more openly talked about, and people with all kinds of disabilities have been much more assertive in claiming their, their sexuality and their right to be sexual. Uh, disabled people, and myself included, 
are represented uh, horribly in the media. I mean, in, in movies, in literature, in books, in TV, you never even see a cripple guy have a girlfriend. He's a great comic from over in San Francisco, goes to SF State. Everybody, please give it up for my good friend, Jackson McBriar. Uh, I, um, I have cerebral palsy, which is awesome, because right now my leg is twitching, which is making me better at sex. I think that people view me as sort of a self-appointed spokesman for disability and sexuality, because that's what I talk about, and the reason that I talk about it is because very few people are. Until I see Stephen Hawking or some other famous crippled guy on the cover of some trashy romance novel, I'm still going to be forced to tell beautiful crafted dick jokes, because no one else is doing it. You know, um, I was drinking, and uh, after one or two beers, I started to walk better. So I asked my doctor about it. It's like, well, Jackson, you have cerebral palsy. Anything that releases your muscles will help you walk better, like one or two beers, an orgasm, or a joint. It's like, really, Doc? You mean I could get medicinal blowjobs? When you tell, when I tell a joke, I try to make it. You know that it's from the heart, and you know that I have these, like, uh, same needs and wants as other human beings. Getting to see disabled people as being sexual is part of like basically bringing them back into the human race and making them into like real people again. If I can help explode the paradigm that says that everything about me that isn't my body works and everything about me that is my body doesn't work, sex can explode that. Sex is desire, inspiration, life-changing. Touching, feeling, kissing. Intrigue, it's um, exploring unknowns. It's very emotional. Sex is surrender. Sex is communion. Sex is being alive. Squid hat is not sexy. I guess not, not really. He gave me a squid hat for Christmas, and it's awesome, but it's not sexy. It was out here a little while ago. Um, Dang, purple. Yeah. I guess squids are vaguely phallic. Tentacles. Yeah, tentacles. That's not, that's yeah. not sexy. Yeah. Can I, like, put weight on your shoulders? Oh, God. Oh, I just need you. Oh, my face. Ow. I'm so sorry. Ow. You owe me. I think that's my time. Please go out and fuck the disabled. Good night. I'm Jackson McBrayer. <laughs>